Hey guys, so it's been a minute, and I figured it's probably time that I finally get around to talking about a little project known as Best Friends. And for some reason, the R in Friends is surrounded in parentheses. I don't fucking know why. So this movie stars Greg Sestero as John and Tommy Wiseau as Harvey. Yes, Tommy and Greg are once again back together in a film. Although, important thing to note this time around, while Tommy does have a starring role in this movie, he did not direct this, he did not write this, I don't even think he produced this. This is more or less a Greg film. He's had more involvement behind the scenes of this movie than Tommy has. So, this is really more of a Greg Sestero film. Although, I don't think he directed or wrote it. He might have produced it. Anyway, this is not a Tommy Wiseau film. It's just, another, it's just a film that has both Greg Sestero and Tommy Wiseau. Just want to make that clear. So, this project was divided into two volumes, released at two, at two different dates, in 2017, yeah, 2017. Volume one starts with a homeless man named John meeting Harvey, who runs a morgue where he specializes in recreating faces for dis disfigured corpses. Gives him a job, finds out that he's been collecting a gold fillings from corpses over the years, and the two of them decide to start selling them. Volume one, spoiler alert, ends with. You know, Greg, along with his then-girlfriend, Tracy, uh, pushing Tommy So off a cliff, seemingly killing him, but turns out they didn't. And then Volume 2 follows the aftermath of the previous volume, with John and Tracy trying to find a way to actually get the money out of the safe, and running into opposing parties, and other people that want to get that money. So... This, of course, already gained a lot of attention just because it has Greg Sestero and Tommy Wiseau, the two most famous people from the movie The Room. Now, I watched both of these back-to-back -back on one night, last night, actually, at the time of recording this. And it's certainly interesting. I mean, of course, you got a lot of the small weirdness you would expect from a film that stars both of these characters. But in terms of overall weirdness, you might be a little underwhelmed. Don't get me wrong, there are two things that are particularly weird about this film, or, or these films. One of them is that the, for some reason there's a lot of Knights Templar imagery in one room, in this film, in these films, there's a couple of Knights Templar posters. One such poster includes one kneeling before a figure that seems to be Jesus Christ. A similar such picture was depicted when Tom Rousseau, for some reason, is wearing a Knights Templar helmet and is kneeling in front of a handcuffed Greg Sestero. For some odd reason, I have no fucking clue. And I honestly don't know what the point of that Knights Templar imagery was. But there's another other, like, very weird thing about this film. So this film seemingly takes place in modern day, somewhere in the 2010s. Now, Tommy So plays a character, Harvey, who was dating a woman named Elizabeth Short in this past. Who would then be murdered, known as, and would in the after after her death be known as Black Dahlia, a woman who was famous for the gruesome nature of her murder. This was a real thing that happened in real life. You can look this up on the internet to get like a basic summary of what happened. But the unique thing about this is that that murder happened 1947. And from all accounts, the year it happened does not change in the narrative of Best Friends. In fact, one of the last dialogue exchanges of Volume 2 has Greg asking Tommy's character, How old are you, by the way? And Tommy just laughs. That was his only response. Another very weird thing about that film in narrative-wise. 
of course, behind the scenes, it's probably just like a fun nod to the fact that Tommy Wiseau is very secretive about his past, including his age. But that still brings up a lot of weird and awkward questions about the nature of their friendship. Now, of, and of course, other than those two, there is some of the predictable weirdness you might find. Awkward dialogue execution, weirdly shot scenes. There's a lot of music that just doesn't really fit in that well. And it plays out what you would normally expect. But of course, now, in the, now is the big question. How does this compare to The Room? At first look, it's very easy to just say that it's better than The Room because a lot of shots, for the most part, are well better executed and created than The Room. And the dialogue, for the most part, is a little better. And there's... There is a little bit of actual, legit, intended tension and other stuff that's probably felt more intentional compared to The Room. However, watching both these films, there's a lot of boring stuff in that those films. A lot of unrememberable stuff as well. The Room, on a very technical level, does at first seem pretty inferior to best friends, but it is full of characters, scenes, dialogue, and other such moments that just made this film such a famous piece of cinema. I'm not saying it's actually a legit good film, The Room. No one is saying that. But it's because it's, its weird, awkward, bad nature has reached a point where it is just going balls to the wall with it. I mean, it is completely full of th of engaging content that, while not good quality, is hilarious and entertaining to watch from beginning to end. So, while at first Best Friends may seem like the better film compared to The Room, and in a couple of respects it still is, I would always remember The Room way better than Best Friends, although... If you want to see another film that stars Greg Sestero and Tommy Wiseau, I would suggest go checking this film out because, while there's a lot of boring stuff in it, it is still worth the curiosity. It's so, your curiosity will get a hold of you and get you to watch it, and, and really you're not going to regret it. There are probably going to be a couple things that you are going to find amusing about it, but nowhere near the same extent as The Room. But that's all I really have to say about Best Friends. And honestly, you could probably find a way to edit both these volumes and just make it one big movie. Sure, it might clock in around 2 hours, 20 minutes, maybe 2 and a half hours. But honestly, I don't really see a really big need to make this two films. But anyway, that's all I really have to say about this. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Dr. Cinema. See you next time.